Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. Today I want to do a quick video about how to install Homebox if you have a Synology NAS. So Homebox is a really, really nice uh, software. I have been using it for like literally almost every waking minute of the past 24 hours, minus my sleeping and work time, inventorizing and documenting my stuff. And uh, it's really great. Now the way to install it, if you go to the website, click on to quick start, uh, they give you a couple of Docker scripts. So if you have a container container management on whatever you're hosting infrastructure on, whether that's a, a server in the cloud or whatever, you can use this and it'll uh, basically build uh, the, uh, the container and the volume to house the data. But um, what I did was follow this guide from uh, MariusHosting.com. So firstly, all credit to Marius Bogdan Lijandru. And what he did, if you, com if you compare their Docker Compose script and look at what it's doing, you know, it's saying this is where the image, this is very important uh, that you're pulling from the right repo to get the latest image, uh, some environment credentials, and the volume uh, it's creating here is fine except for the fact that it's not really for it's not really following the format on the Synology. So the script that he's given, if I can just find it for a second, um, the script he's given a uh, Docker run. Um, the port setting is like this, and under volume you can see uh, what he's done. Their volume one is the root of your uh, of your uh, storage on the Synology. Then there is a volume called Docker, which I believe is created by default, so you don't need to create that. But there is a folder here that is called Homebox, uh, lowercase all Homebox, which uh, you do create, and then he's just appended the data folder onto there. So the first step in this installation process is going to be making a folder called Homebox in the Docker folder in your Synology. So I'm already up and running here, but you can see in my Docker folder, I just created a folder and you want to, we want to call it exactly Homebox, just like I have it in the top folder here above Snipe It, and then we can move on to running the installation script. So to run the installation script, firstly copy this off the clipboard. I'll put it in the video description for those who want to uh, use it. And uh, just make sure, have a quick eyeball of whatever you're looking, make sure that you've got the repository uh, correct. And it's worth, because this is a third party addition to the script, I would just cross-reference with the official uh, documentation for the project, just to make sure that the repo, ghcr.io forward slash haycott forward slash homebox latest, just make sure that corresponds exactly to this, just in case the repo is renamed, you wanna make sure that you're pulling in the latest version. Just a quick note as well here, that you will find images in in the container images uh, library in uh, so not in uh, in DSM, but you don't want to pull in really from third-party images if you can avoid it. Uh, so this is a better method, and let's move on now to running the script. So to run the script, you want to get into your control panel, then click Task Scheduler at the bottom. And the next thing that you want to do is go for Create User Defined Script. And then you want to make sure that you switch the user from your username on the NAS into root. This is again important because you're going to need to run this with root privileges. For the actual task, you can just kind of give it any name that you please. I'm going to call it Homebox Installation and move on to the next step. The way I personally did this was initiate the script once. So you don't want to be running the script repeatedly because you're going to end up overwriting your data if that's the case. So you can do something like this, run on the following day, select today's date, and then make sure that the repeat thing is set to do not repeat. So you're only going to run this script at uh, one time. And then if you go into task settings, you have the option to uh, send run details by email. I definitely recommend doing this. And this way you'll just know that the installation script went off successfully. Finally, we need to paste the script that we got from this blog here. I'm just going to copy this over into the user defined script here. And now we can click OK and this will create the script. The easiest way to do this is once you have the script set up, you can just right click on it like this and then go for run. And what I'd, what I'd also personally recommend doing as well is after the installation has gone smoothly, I would actually delete the script just to make sure there's no chance that you accidentally uh, run it a second time. After the script does its thing, you should be able to go into your container manager, which if you don't have installed is a packet in DSM. It used to be called Docker and it's just for managing your uh, containers on the NAS. And then click into container and you should be able to see that you have a container for Homebox and just verify again where the image came from. We can see it went smoothly and it pulled in from the latest image on the 
uh, on the repository. If you right click on the container and click into details, you'll be also able to inspect some of the information about the container. You can see, for instance, that the volume has been created for data exactly where we specified in the script. We can also see the port it's using is 3100. This is important to know because if you want to access this from outside your network, you're going to need to use the port name. The next thing you're going to do or to get to your installation, assuming it's gone well and set the thing up, is go to the IP address of your NES. For example, if yours is 192.168.1.1, then put a colon to specify the port number and then type in 3100 to bring yourself to the home page of Homebox. And then if everything's gone well, you'll get firstly to a setup screen where you can create an account and then you are registered and you can use it on your system. And as you can see, I'm actually going through it now. This is being hosted on my NES. Uh, and it's an amazing system. You can create your inventory, you can add photos and do lots of other very, very useful things uh, to get your home organized. I'll do a separate video about the actual workings of this tool. I'm very much in the uh, starting process of getting this running, but you can see I've already done a decent amount of work in terms of inventorizing basically all the stuff that I have uh, lying around. And I've chosen this one uh, particularly because I attached a photo as well, which is really nice. Uh, you can search for things uh, that you own and you'll be able to, if there's a photo, you can identify them as well, which is super, super helpful. And for everything in the system, again, I'm, I'm venturing slightly into how to use this thing. The real utility, in my view, is that everything has an individual QR code, meaning that you can take QR codes for not just your assets, also your locations. And that way you can keep track of where everything is by scanning these and making sure that everything is in the right location. Because I'm kind of into backups, I always like to give a thought to that, and I'm kind of working on a system for that at the moment. There is one really simple way to back up a container in Synology. That's to click on the container, go into export, and then you're going to have options for exporting just the container settings or export the container contents and the settings. You absolutely want to go for the second one. If you look at the first option, you can see that you're not actually really exporting all that much, just stuff like the port settings, the environment variables. In other words, this is not going to preserve your data. Now you can also try to export data out of uh, the application itself, but this would actually be a, obviously a more thorough approach. And then you can put that into a folder on your Synology or download it to your local machine. Final question you might be wondering is, well, how can I access this out side of my network. So there's a few different different approaches. I'm personally using Tailscale. Please don't hack my inventory. Uh, it's really, really good. I'm very impressed by it. You can also set up a reverse proxy uh, and there's a couple more solutions, but the one I recommend is uh, Tailscale. It's working really, really nicely. You can install that in Package Manager. Then you authenticate your NES as a device. Then you authenticate the computer that you need to connect to. And then you get an IP address, a public IP for your NES and you just need to affix the port 3100 thingy before. So, you know, whatever your public IP it gives you is, you add uh, the semicolon and then 3100. And uh, assuming that you the computer you're connecting from is authenticated in your tail scale network, you will be able to connect from outside the local area network into, your, uh, into the container on your NES. And the performance is still really, really good, which I think is very impressive. Hope this video was helpful. If you're looking to get started with setting this up, on a Synology NAS. It's an amazing tool, great, great development project, and I wish it much success. And uh, thanks for watching today's video.